This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, cat lovers. This is Michelle Fern, your host on Catitude. Today, I have with me the most wonderful author who's written the most adorable children's book. So I am excited to have him on the show. And then we're going to talk about how to introduce your child to a cat. You know, you might have adopted a cat recently with all this COVID business and being stuck at home. And cats make great pets with for kids, but they have to know how to coexist. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Radio.com, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I am so excited to have with me today, Devin Michael. Let's see if I get this right. San Giovanni, the author of the Mupsy series. He loves me. He truly loves me. Welcome, Devin. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's wonderful to have you. So before we talk about the Mupsy series that you have, let's talk about you. What's your background and how did you come to write a children's book about cats, about this adorable cat? Adorable. Well. I was a children's songwriter for many years. Uh, I studied with the piano prodigy right outside of New York City for 10 years. And I wrote children's music, so I played all over. And I'm a born lyricist. So I always knew I would write this book in particular because there's so much love between us. And what happened was I always had this thing. I'm a writer, like a natural born writer. And I just knew that something had to come out. So I was a teacher. I was a grammar school teacher. I was a high school teacher. I did preschools. I did daycares. I, I always had a connection, you know, with children. And I love kids. You know, they're just so much fun. And when I came across this guy, you know, he's just the love of my life. And that's exactly the way he is, you know, flopsy, mopsy, mopsy. So I just knew because there's more messages that I have to get, you know, but my primary message is about love. You know, it's all about the love. That's so sweet. Well, okay, so let's talk about the book. So how did you, and before we talk about the book, though, wait, I want to know, how did you actually find Mupsy? Is it is it very similar to the book or is it a little bit different? That's a true story. Okay. That's exactly the way it happened. I was looking for a female seal point. So you were looking for a female kitten. Mm-hmm. And I called all over the country and no one had a female seal point. Uh, seal point means the coloring that he has, the taupe colored mask and the ears and the paws. Uh, they have other colorings. You know, they have gray, they have orange flame tips. They have all different ones. But I wanted that specific one. And I called all over the country and couldn't find a female. And even that morning when I called, I called John and he said, yes, we have little girl kittens. <laughs> what time we'd be here? And sure enough, when I went, I took one look at him and that was it. There, I wasn't feeling it for the other kittens. Okay, why female? I mean, my, my kit, cats are rescued, so I didn't have really a say in what they were as far as gender, but why a female cat? Well, I had a female Maltese, you know, that was my little girl, that was my baby, and I wanted to hug her and kiss her and snuggle her and, you know, smush her up. So I wanted a girl, and it's funny because I worked, uh, years ago, I worked at the chart house, and all the girls had cats, and they all told me, Devin, you better get a male cat. And I was like, no, I wanted a female, but they were right. They said that males are more affectionate. And I was like, I don't know. And then I went with uh, wanting the female, but ended up coming home with him. You know what? There might be something because my male is way more affectionate than both of my females. Mm -hmm. 
you know? Yeah, and I'm not prejudiced or anything. I just, I listened to them because they obviously had cats and I never had a cat. So this is your first cat was Mupsy. And mm-hmm. so you called all over, you know, the all country. Over. Where did you end up finding him? I found him right up in New York State, uh, right over the border, because I live in New Jersey, and there was a place, a cattery up there. And I called, and they said, yes, we have little girl kittens, you know, and, you know, females. And I said, okay, I'll come tomorrow. And I went the next day, and he called me before I came, and he said, the seal points are males. I said, I'm coming anyway. So it's a real true story. I think it's adorable. And the watercolor, the um, the pictures are beautiful. Does it do justice to Mupsy? The, um, oh, my God. It looks exactly like him. Oh, that's exactly. great. So what made you decide, I'm going to write a story about this for children? I know that you have a lot of background with children and the true story. But what made you decide, you know what, this would be a great story. But you did it from the cat's point of view, from Mupsy's point of view. Well, originally... It's interesting because I always knew I was going to write a story. Like, I just want to write for children. And for him, he was special. You know, he's a special guy. And it just came out. You have to understand, you know, I'm a fairly spiritual person, you know. And I just knew that I was going to write the book. I just didn't know when. And then all of a sudden, one day, I had gone somewhere. And usually a group of friends would meet together. And for some reason that day, no one was there. And I said, oh, my God. You know, the room went dark. And I said, you have nothing planned for the next hour and a half. You're going to write that book. And I literally sat there and wrote the book, almost start to finish. It just came right out. And what happens is as a lyricist, as time goes on, it just works itself out into lyric. Like, you know, you notice all the rhyme in the book, right? Right, right. All the internal rhymes. So the beginning of the book was done. A friend of mine is an illustrator and she always said, I'm an artist, I'm an artist. But she never really did artwork. She, you know, she worked a regular job like myself, you know, I'm a writer too. And I, you know, but I work regular job and I don't know why, but one day I looked at her and I said, I don't know why, but I have a funny feeling she can catch him. And when she came back with it, everybody was amazed. Like everybody gasped when they saw the pictures. So I, for myself, sat there and wrote the book. And as time went on, it kind of married itself you know, back to the rhyme, but it's the whole story. It's really the story of Mupsy and me and how we came to be. It's all true. So it wasn't a stretch, you know? I like the fact that you said you're spiritual and I'm kind of spiritual myself more than religious. And Mm -hmm. you, you know, in the book, there's a little part where you said, you know, Mupsy prayed and prayed. And when I was reading it, I thought, at first I thought, oh boy, if this is really religious, that's going to be a little bit hard for catitude because we're about cats we're we're not really Mm -hmm. we're not a religious show at all but it touches on it but it doesn't go too far did you Mm -hmm. have concerns when you put that in the book that it says it but a couple times but it doesn't push it you know what i mean yeah yeah because i found in my life you know i tried to do so many things and it didn't really work and then i would just you know, I didn't, what, what I was very conscious of was I didn't put any religion in it. You know, like there's no religion. He just right. prayed. And many people pray. Every religion prays and every spiritual people pray. People pray and meditate, you know. And for him, then one day he decided to pray. Like he, he was so sad. He didn't have any other choice. So I kind of think it's just, it just touches on it. It's kind of like a touch, you know, like a, one of those touchdown landings and then goes into, like you have to believe in what you're doing. And as a writer, I've always been a writer, you know, but, and I never really thought, it's not that I didn't think to write a book. It's just, I think things happen in the right time. And this happened to be the time. Right. And they also happen for a reason. So Mm -hmm. this was, you know, this was your reason in time. It was meant to be. And and what you were saying before, yeah, praying takes a lot of different forms. And Mm -hmm. how you put it, it was there, but it wasn't a soccer punch, you know, it was just Mm -hmm. there and just made the point. And I'm glad you didn't put any religion in there because this way it appeals to everyone, you know, all little children, not just one, you know, denomination, right, denomination and so forth. So tell me about the series that is, this is the first in the series. Oh, yes, it is. Just the beginning. Okay. What's going to be coming up? Well, the next book, if you saw the last page, it says, uh, I love him. I truly love him. And that's the next book. That's about when I, you know, because in the last page, I said, put your coat on. We're going home. And the next book is about us heading home, our trip home. Because I remember in the car, you know, he's so cute. 
on my shoulder. You know, I put my hand, I could see he wanted to get out of the box. So I put him on my arm, you know, I put my arm out and he kind of, you know, how cats, they test to see if they, if it's strong enough to hold them. And he put one paw out, he put another paw out. And next thing you know, he managed to, you know, wiggle his way out of the box and he crawled his way all the way up my arm, wrapped himself around my shoulders and fell fast asleep. He oh. sounded asleep. Yes. So that's oh, going to wow. be about all that love that started from the moment that I met him. And cat owners know that feeling. There's no better feeling than your cat snuggling in your arms and purring away, purring up a storm. It's like, it's healing. It's just healing energy. And from the minute I laid eyes on him, that was it. I mean, I was like, oh, there he is. That's him. Like I knew right away. And uh, when it happened was when I took him home, I happened to stop at a few of my friends' houses to show him off. So the whole book, like he thought nobody was going to love him. And then I pick him up and there's nothing but love. And that's what the book is about. So I show, you know, it's going to be about us on our way home. You know, the journey home down the long winding road with the snow, because I did pick him up in December. And uh, that's why he had waited so long, because he was born in August. And all the other kittens were getting picked up and he was being left behind. So it's about me bringing him home and then him coming in the house and seeing all the things that I brought him. You know, I bought him a new cubby and a new condo and new blankets and new bowls. So he's going to run from room to room to room to see all the good things that he got. Oh, you know, that's great. it's always going to be about love. What is your goal to share with the children? What do you hope that children get from the book? Love. That's all. I just want them to know that they are loved. You know, there are so many different sad situations that go on for children and they don't have a voice. And I hope everyone finds a mups in their life. You know, someone that they can just love and have unconditional love back. And for children, I just pray, you know, that they find their own mups in their life. And I also have a very powerful preface for the parents. Uh, I don't know if you read that, but it says to all parents, it is in the presence of love that all children can grow and prosper. As parents, it is our responsibility to provide them with that love. We owe it to this little child a sense of security that he or she is well taken care of and that they may feel loved and understood in all situations. Encourage your child's strengths and help them with their weaknesses. It is in this experience of you that they will find their own strength to grow and prosper. It is to this end that I bring you the Mopsy series. I did read it, and I have to actually got goosebumps when you're talking about it again, because it's kind of a little bit of a, I don't want to say smack in the face, but a whisper or, you know, mm -hmm. subtle to take care of your children, you know, and... Uh, There's no better present than love. Be exactly. Loved. They need to be loved. That's it. You know, they will grow and prosper. They're loved. So I mean, think your series is wonderful. The book is great. What age would you say, children, this is for? You know, I always thought little kids, you know, two, three, four, because, you know, they're not going to be reading the book. The parent's going to be reading the book to them, you know, because, and yet I read it to a friend of mine's two kids. And one was, I think, uh, seven and the other was 11. And the 11 year old boy absolutely loved the book. And I have adults that read the book and they love the book. So it's interesting, the area that I can cover. And cat lovers, for sure, will go crazy because they know they know the love, you know. And exactly. And what better way to if you're an aunt, a grandparent, or oh, a yeah. friend, and you want to subtly introduce to the parent that you really should get a cat, bring them the Mupsy book, and then slowly work on them. Because I think having a pet, having a you know a, a fur babe, a cat especially is really good for children. It's great for them. It's a great way for them to grow. It's a great way for them to learn responsibility, great way for them to learn love, unconditional love that you get from a pet, you know? So I think it's a great idea. Devin, where can we find your book? Uh, you can find it on mupsymupsy.com. That's the website. You can get it there because they'll order it through Balboa, which is my publishing company, which prints on glossy paper. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's brilliant. You know, the colors are brilliant. And, you know, of course, it's on Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble. It's everywhere pretty much right now. And I have a publicist who got in touch with you. So now it's going to be hopefully everywhere. Well, I just wish for the best for you. Is there going to be a Mupsy song maybe? Yes, definitely. How did you know? I am a lyricist and I know there will be plenty of Mupsy music coming up. Wow. You know, I figured this is like the first step. Because the book came out Christmas, you know, right around the holidays. And then, boom, next thing you know, we have a pandemic. Right. So we sat in the house for a couple of months. And now he's coming out, you know, 
was coming out to be seen. And now I'm just getting the website together. There'll be merchandise. You know, I'm going to have t-shirts and backpacks and all those things that kids love. I want to have the border, you know, the borders for the kids room, you know, when they have a, mm-hmm. a nursery and they have the borders around the edges. I just, I envision that. I see Mupsy and the star in the heart. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, they're so colorful. And, you know, I just hope that people can find that spot because cats are much easier, you know, as far as taking care of them. And they have their litter pan. You clean the litter pan. They pretty much take care of themselves. They take a bath. He's funny because every night after he eats dinner, he goes in the bathtub and takes a bath. He (laughs) takes a bath by himself? No, no, with his paws. You know how they always take a bath? They're always washing and primping. He does it in the bathtub. (laughs) He finishes dinner after dinner, goes in the bathtub and takes a bath. Cracks me up. With no water in it, right? No, no, no water. He only did that. He did that trick once when he was little. He didn't know where I was because I was, you know, I was in the shower. So he could see, I guess, my shadow. And he thought he could join me. (laughs) You had to see all those paws going crazy. Oh, he hit the water. He flew right out. He was soaking wet, little guy. I had that experience with one of my cats, with Molly. She was, oh, she was only, I think, a couple months old. And it was actually... We're in South Florida, so, you, you know, you get ready for it. We were having a hurricane, and you need to fill your tub with water so that if you need to flush, that's what you use um, because water's not potable, so you, you have to – no water. So anyway, so all of a sudden, power's out, and a couple minutes later, there's a splash, and my partner <laughs> dove to – my significant other, he dove to the bathroom. The door was shut, Okay. The tub was filled, the door to the shower was shut, and the door to the bathroom was shut. How she got in there, I have no idea. But mm-hmm. she, <laughs> she, <laughs> she didn't like the bathroom for a little while after that, and she learned yeah, that, sure. you know. Yeah, I mean, she I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> she wasn't. She just leaped over. Yeah, she learned to look, look after She had to open the door. She had to open the shower to jump in the bathtub. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. You never jump know. It. You know, you, that's the fun with cats is you never know what they're going to be into and what they're going to end up doing. They're a little mischievous, which is um, kind of fun about them. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they love to sleep. Yeah. That's good when they're sleeping sometimes because (laughs) sometimes as pet parents like when they're sleeping. Are you on social media so everyone listening can see a little more Mups here? Are you on um, Facebook, Instagram? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, I have a Facebook page called The Mupsy Series. And we also now have Instagram, The Mupsy Series, which is what I've been trying to learn how to do today, (laughs) literally today. So if anybody wants to put it on their Instagram. And come and follow you. It's um, yes, at please. the Mupsy series. That's for Facebook page and Instagram. Devin, thank you so much for coming on Catitude. I wish you and Mubsy the best. We'll be right back after this break. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first part of the show. It was really interesting talking to Devin, hearing about his book and his his passion, his love for his cat, and how much he wants children to just understand what it's like to have a cat, have a pet, feel the love from the pet, and to feel just that unconditional love back. Well, what I wanted to share with you are some tips that I've discovered on how you should 
introduce your young children to cats because cats are not, <laughs> as you've heard me say before, cats are not small dogs and children have to be, especially young children, have to be mindful of, you know, how cats can react because cats scratch and they bite and a bitten child is not going to be prey for anybody. So, for children, keep this in mind, for children that are under five or six, you might want to consider not getting a kitten, but maybe consider adopting a cat that's over two years old because children tend to be, especially young children, tend to be a little rough with things at times, probably most of the time. And kittens are so fragile. They're just very delicate creatures. They're babies. And Children don't realize this. So, you know, if the child were to squeeze the little kitty too hard or maybe pull on the tail or something, it might not only hurt the kitten, but the kitten might end up hurting your child. And who wants that? They're scratching and they're biting as a way for them to defend themselves. Cats can't say, hey, stop pulling my tail like that. They're going to scratch or bite. And that's not good for your child. Cats have a lot of bacteria in their mouth. So consider maybe getting an older cat for your child. Also, and I cannot stress this enough, this is one of my pet peeves. Yes, there's a pun, but it's one of my pet peeves. Do not leave your cat or kitten or dog even or any animal at all with a young child unsupervised ever, please. You know, I've heard so many stories over the years of people telling me, well, my dog is perfect. He would never or she would never hurt a child. Never, ever, ever, ever. Okay, well, you know what? If your dog has been like super powerfully trained, most of our dogs and cats and, and other pets are not. So don't leave your pet with your child unsupervised, especially your cat, because cats are very, they're very sensitive. You know, they're not very touchy-feely, you know, creatures. You have to be very careful around them. Cats prefer to be pet, you know, very gently. And a young child sees a cat and, you know, they don't know. They have stuffed animals that might look like the cat. They don't know. They can't squeeze it. They can't pull the hair, you know, the cat's fur. They can't pull the cat's tail. They don't know this. So it just takes one little second and your child ends up with a bite or an other kind of injury, we don't want that. So just please don't make the mistake of leaving your child unsupervised with a cat, a dog, a kitten, a puppy. Don't do it. Okay. Thank you for indulging me on my pet peeve because I feel so strongly about that. I've heard so many sad stories over the years. Okay. Here's another thing to make sure to do with your child. Make sure your child knows how to act around the cat or the kitten. Oftentimes, and it's not just children, I find adults too, are too rough with cats. Cats are very sensitive. They need to be pet very gently. They need to be touched very gently. They need to be handled kind of quietly, as, as especially in comparison to how most children are kind of rambunctious and energetic and all that. Cats are more quiet and mellow. So make sure your child knows how to act around the cat so that being around the cat is a positive experience. Okay, another thing is make sure your cat plays quietly with your young child. Kind of refrain from catnip, which might set your cat off to go a little bonkers. Uh, refrain from, you know, kind of toys where the cat might jump around and everything, because if the cat jumps and can't reach it, he might jump onto your child. And that's not going to be pretty because, yeah, cats have claws. And I guess the last thing I want to mention is, you know, your cat has its own space. You know, cat condo, it has a little cubby, it likes to hide in certain places, it has certain toys. Make sure your child respects that and understands that this little space is for your cat. When your cat is hiding, he needs time by him or she needs time by himself. Let your child understand that and not go and, you know, try to sneak under the bed where the cat's hiding. Let your cat have that space. Of course, there's a lot of other things, you know, to think about with, you know, cats and kittens and children. But these are the 
ideas that come to mind right away when I think of children and cats. Just some tips I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I think the Mopsy book and the Mopsy series by Devin Michael San Giovanni is absolutely adorable. It's a great gift for children. You can find the Mopsy series anywhere, Amazon, all over the place. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. I would like to thank my guest, Devin Michael San Giovanni, for coming on Catitude and sharing his book about his love for his cat, Mubsy, and the Mubsy series. Thanks to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me and my guest sound wonderful. Thanks to everyone listening to Catitude. Please share this show with children in your life and or friends that have children. If you have just, you know, fur baby children, It's a great way to um, get this message out about cats and love and children and all of that. And uh, thanks to my uh, feline fur babes, which are Dennis and Charlotte and Molly and Jethro and Sammy and sometimes Jazz. He visits every so often. And uh, thanks to Nikki, my yapper canine, for um, teaching me all about the unconditional love of fur babes. So I wanted to thank everybody for listening. Thank you for keeping Catitude so popular out there on the digital airwaves. And stay tuned. We have some great shows coming up. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.